So which teams from League One do I see joining in our plucky championship clubs for next season? Let's discuss in this video. What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. It's been a very hectic week to tell you the truth. I've been uploading every single day, even live streaming on weekend days. If you guys can really give this video a like, it tremendously would be appreciated. Please subscribe if you're new around here. We only gained two subscribers in all week despite making eight videos last week let's try and push for 500 as soon as we can if we get 500 subscribers of course i keep promising you guys i will post content on the shorts channel and that is a guarantee without any further ado let's step down a division to league one and debate who i think is going to be going up so this is what the league one table currently looks like and a bit of an exclusive i'll be interested to hear if we have any viewers supporting any league one clubs in the comments but the section I want to look is the top half of the table, which is what I'm going to be looking at. What I want to actually show you guys, I'm going to first show the promotion odds. So this is basically teams who are better to actually get promoted out of League One. So it's interesting that Hull are still the favourites to get promoted from League One. With Peterborough second and then Sunderland third. And then you've got Lincoln, Portsmouth and Blackpool pretty much almost the exact shape of that top six. Then you've got Doncaster and then Ipswich eighth despite them being 11th place, but they do have two games in hand. Then you've got Oxford and then Charlton with the next highest odds. But this is the odds who Skybet think will win League One. And it's interesting, from third favourites to get promoted, Sunderland are the favourites to win League One, according to Skybet. Bit interesting how they've calculated that, but I can definitely understand why. Then it's Hull and then it's Peterborough. Then you've got Blackpool, Lincoln, and then Portsmouth. Portsmouth quite far down. Then you've got Doncaster and still Ipswich, still quite high up there. Then you've got Charlton, Oxford, and then you've got Acton and Crew, who are in around the mid-table position. But I don't consider them being promoted at least this season. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to cover the last batch of games for what 10 sides I think will get promoted have. And then I'll make my decision who I think will get promoted, who I think will be in the playoffs, and who I think will get promoted by the playoffs. So we'll start off from the top down to the teams who I think are less likely to go up. So we are going to start with Hull, who are currently first place in their division, but very narrowly right now. It's not been as easy when we went on a rocky patch of form in around December time where they had three defeats in a row. But then they picked their form up just a little bit at the right time, starting at February where, where, where they've won five. But they have dropped points in their last two games. And they've both come in the form of 1-1 draws against Shrewsbury and Gillingham. And now with their final eight games, they've got to hope and pray that the likes of Sunderland and Peterborough don't catch up and pick up their form. Sunderland is a big game that they've got to play in the 20th of April. Then they've got to go straight after that, playing against Lincoln City. So two tough teams right behind them, challenging for that promotion place. They've got to play back to back. Then they end with Wigan and then also playoff chasing Charlton. So Hull don't have an easy run in really. They have two very, very tough games, especially Sunderland and Lincoln being the toughest for me. And even when they've got Northampton, a team who are fighting for their lives in relegation, it won't be easy for them either. And Charlton away under Nigel Atkins now, it's not going to be easy for Grant McCann and his boys. We now go to Peterborough, a team that most championship fans will know as the team who has been relegated with the most points won. They've not been in the championship for over 10 years now. Could this be the end of their absence in the championship under Darren Ferguson. Peterborough in tradition they tend to have a fantastic run of form and then they drop off but they've maintained a bit of consistency this season and Peterborough do remind me of Brentford a little bit in terms of their transfer strategy. They let good players go replace them well and get good value of it. I remember where they sold Britta Sombalonga they also sold, of course, Ivan Tony to Brentford. Now they've got Clark Harris in this place where he's looking absolutely brilliant. They still got Dembele, who I have no idea how they still got him. He's been absolutely scintillating this season. And Peterborough have somehow maintained a consistency. And if they win their game in hand, they can overtake Hull. These are the nine games that they've got. Fleetwood away. 
Fleetwood don't have a lot to play for, but they do have Simon Grayson in charge. Then they've got Sunderland. That's a huge game for Peterborough. If they can beat Sunderland, then I would almost guarantee Peterborough going up because I do think Sunderland is the one team a little bit worried about with Peterborough because they can definitely catch up. Swindon fighting relegation, so that won't be easy. Then they've got Northampton, another team fighting relegation. They've got to be careful. Ginningham, I mean, they've picked up some great away points recently, Ginningham. They did one against Portsmouth. They got an away point against Hull recently. Then they've got Charlton, then Doncaster, then Lincoln, and then Doncaster again. So Peterborough have got to play Doncaster twice in their last nine games. That's going to be very, very cruel to them. I watched when they beat Accrington last weekend by seven goals to nil. It was an unbelievable performance. We made an Accrington Stanley side, who by all means are no pushovers in League One, look very, very average. So I definitely think they are definitely responding in the right way, definitely wanting to go up. But they cannot afford to be dropping off at this stage of the season because they do tend to do that, Peterborough. They cannot afford it. We now go to Sunderland. Obviously, the team with the biggest stadium in League One. If you even look at their table stats, they've only lost five games out of their 36 that they managed to play in all season but they will just drop too many city points and get too many draws and that is exactly what has happened this season that resulted in Phil Parkinson leaving Sunderland they've now got Lee Johnson in and Lee Johnson has rejuvenated something with Sunderland and right now they are looking absolutely unstoppable unbeaten in 10 games with seven wins out of those 10 games as well but they have got a pretty tough running to try and ensure that promotion. So they've got to play Oxford, a team who will be challenging them in terms of the top six especially. Then they've got Peterborough, which is a big game. Away at Peterborough is not going to be easy, but if Sunderland get a good result, then I think Sunderland can definitely almost start dreaming about the championship again. I definitely think that is going to be the deciding game. Then they've got Charlton, not easy. Obviously a repeat of the League One playoff final from 2019, which is quite exciting. Wigan will be tough because we're going to have got to try and survive. Blackpool away is really tough. Then they've got to play against Hull away from home. And then they've got to play Blackpool again. To be honest, I think Southern have actually got the toughest running out of all of the teams so far. They've got to play the top two away from home. They've got to play Blackpool, a team in the top six twice. And they've still got to play Charlton as well, who'll be challenging as well. And Oxford, at least if Southern do go up. They would have needed to get through a tough challenge to go up. And then we go to Lincoln City. Oh, Lincoln, where has it all gone wrong? You only lost once in your opening nine games with seven wins of those nine games as well. But then all of a sudden now, you have managed to lose five out of your last eight. Lincoln right now are precariously losing distance and touch of the promotion places. And they need to get through a pretty tough running and try and reclaim that promotion. Charlton away, which won't be easy. Then Blackpool. So two sides around them that they've got to play back to back. Burton under Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. They've been picking up some form recently, Burton. Then Hull, which obviously we know how tough Hull's going to be. They're the leader so far. Peterborough away, which I think is the toughest game for them, but could be the deciding game if they can get a good result. And then Wimbledon to end it off. Likewise, the championship, very momentum-based. We saw Lincoln have a fantastic start, and then with a poor momentum, they're now losing touch. If they could just get a good result, a confident performance, and Michael Apperton can just reinstate some confidence with his Lincoln side, maybe they can be a strong favourite to go up. We now turn our attention to Portsmouth. They have recently got a new manager in Danny Cowley in. I am very excited by that appointment from Portsmouth. I think it's a fantastic appointment from Portsmouth. And it has shown with Portsmouth managing to get back-to-back -back wins under him. And if you look at their running of games, they really do not have that bad of a run-in. They've got Rochdale. They're the team bottom of the league. They may have a bit of fire about them, but if Portsmouth still remain confident, then they can get something. Wigan might be tough away if I'm home especially, but they should get something. Burton, not bad. Crew, not bad. MK Dons, not bad. Swindon, not bad. They're playing a lot of the teams in the bottom part of the table. Put this in perspective, the only team they have to play in the top half of the table is MK Dons, who are 12th. That's the highest league position that Portsmouth have got to play. Now, that can be dangerous if Portsmouth do not take every game seriously. But under a new manager in Danny Cowley, and for the fact he managed to get two wins in a row, maybe Portsmouth can go on a great momentum. And they've got the fixtures for that great momentum as well. 
if they can reinstate some consistency, they can definitely be a favourite going up. Those fixtures are almost laughable. Much, much easier compared to all of the teams I've looked at so far. We now turn our attention to the seaside club known as Blackpool. Now, since Blackpool got relegated in around 2015, I think it was the exact year they'd gone down, they've been through a lot of turbulence. They had a change in owner, a lot of fan protests. Eventually now, they're looking like that they've got a real bit of stability about them. And Neil Critchley has managed to gain fantastic runs of form. One defeat in their last 15 games under him. If you don't know who Neil Critchley is, he used to be the Liverpool's under 23s manager. I think if you looked at their squad, they're definitely punching above their weight, which is just the size of a squad playing under a manager who's got this team playing out of their skin. They've got a pretty so-so running. They've got Swindon, who'll be trying to survive, so it won't be easy. Then Gillingham. Gillingham, as I said, been picking up some great results recently, so it won't be easy. Lincoln will be tough. So if they can beat Lincoln, I actually would say Blackpool would have a stronger chance than Lincoln to gain promoted. I'm really serious. Acton won't be easy. Sunderland away will be their toughest game for me. Then they've got to play against Rochdale and then Shrewsbury. Sunderland again. I did say with Sunderland they've got to play Blackpool twice. So obviously Blackpool got to play Sunderland twice as well. Then they've got Northampton, Doncaster, Bristol Rovers, So actually Blackpool don't have too bad of a run. I've been playing Sunderland twice is the only thing that's a little bit of a disadvantage in terms of their running. Especially if Sunderland pick up their form and they continue to stay unbeaten for as long as they have. They have got a couple of games in hand with the teams around them and I definitely think with that running, it's not the worst running I've seen. They've only got to play Lincoln and they've got to play Sunderland with the teams in the top six. So now we've got the teams just outside of the top six. We start off with Doncaster where likewise with Blackpool, they do have 11 games left and games in hand with the teams around them. They've now got Andy Butler in charge. Of course, Doncaster recently lost their manager, Darren Moore, to Sheffield Wednesday, where he was tempted to move a division above. Doncaster's running. It's a bit of a mixed bag. They've got to start off with Charlton. Big game for them. If they could beat Charlton, then I think it will end Charlton's chances of having a big chance of trying to get promoted. It'll be good for Doncaster to get ahead of a rival. Then they've got Bristol Rovers. Won't be easy as they're trying to survive. Wigan, once again, same reason, trying to survive from League One. Burton might be okay. I think they've saved themselves now, Burton. Shrewsbury away won't be easy. Peterborough, of course, really, really tough for them. Rochdale and then Blackpool and then Peterborough. Okay, so Doncaster look like they've had an all right running, but their final couple of games look quite challenging. They've got to play Peterborough twice, of course. They've got to play Blackpool as well. And I think those three are the only games I'm a little bit worried about with Doncaster, really. The rest of them are not even that bad. And I think if Doncaster can just maintain a bit of consistency and anybody can fix this run of form because they're now winless and five Doncaster. There was a point where Darren Moore managed to get Doncaster five wins in a row. And in fact, actually only one defeat in 11 games. So for the fact that Doncaster dropped off quite significantly, it's not good for them. And Andy Butler needs to reinstate something for what Darren Moore did have. And now we go to Oxford. Oxford, we always see them challenging in around this position. And I was a bit surprised actually to see Oxford in the position that they were because I remember in their first eight games, they lost six of their first eight. And I was thinking Oxford were going to be a team in or around relegation. But then they went on a 10 game unbeaten run and actually sustaining six consecutive wins, which I think is the longest winning streak I have seen in the League One so far this season. They have played quite a substantial amount of games though and have only got nine games left. They've got Sunderland away. Tough opening game. But if they can get a good result, even a draw, I actually think that's a really good result for Oxford, actually. Because then they've got Accrington and then they've got Crewe, which I think two winnable games. They're two mid-table teams. Then they've got to play Shrewsbury, Gillingham. Once again, mid-table definitely can get results. Wimbledon, Plymouth, Shrewsbury and then Burton. Honestly, take away Sunderland. Oxford have a very nice run in just like Portsmouth. So I definitely will be confident of backing both of these sides actually getting into the top six again, likewise for what they did last season. But I think you've got to give Oxford and Carl Robinson some credit. I think they're a very underrated team and a team that does go under the radar a little bit. We'll quickly go over Charlton. Of course, I've covered Charlton quite a bit last season as they were a championship club. I mean, poor Charlton. They've got to play the current top four in their final nine games. 
for me, I don't see Charlton going up under Nigel Atkins. I like Nigel Atkins, I really do. And I really do love Charlton. I really do like what they're about. But I think their running is cruel to beyond belief. I mean, I thought the other teams were cruel, but this running from Charlton, not nice whatsoever. They've even got to play teams just outside of the top six, like Ipswich and Doncaster as well. So yeah, I don't think Charlton will be going up, unfortunately. I just think that it's going to be a bridge too far. To end off the video, I'm going to throw one wild card who I think could surprise people. And that for me is Ipswich. Now, Ipswich went on an unbelievable start. They won five of their opening six games. And then it's just been very inconsistent under Paul Lambert, wasn't it? And then Paul Lambert left the job with Paul Cook taking over as the head coach. Ipswich and Paul Cook have just not been working so far, but there has been a proposed change of ownership. So maybe next season is what Ipswich are looking towards. But if you look at the final 10 games, they can even still get some form of hope of trying to go up because they've got Bristol Rovers and Rochdale, which I actually think are two winnable games, despite teams near the bottom of the table. MK Don's mid-table should be okay. Wimbledon, then Charlton, which is their toughest game so far. A big game for Ipswich. If they can get a good result against Charlton, but I actually think it really strengthens their chance of overtaking Charlton. And now they can enter the competition in trying to get into the top six. I have to say, one of the easiest runners that I've seen, the only team that I think will pose a challenge will be Charlton. Ipswich has got to play five of the bottom six teams in League One. So actually, in terms of runners, guys, I think Ipswich have got a pretty nice running. So that is why I'm definitely throwing them into that wild card because if they can maintain some consistency and Paul Cook can figure something out and figure out his best 11, then I think Ipswich may have something. So, 10 teams in League One who I think can get promoted. Hull, Peterborough, Sunderland, Lincoln, Portsmouth, Blackpool, Doncaster, Oxford, Charlton and Ipswich. Who would I think will get promoted? I'm going to say Sunderland as champions and I'm actually going to say Peterborough second. That might be surprising. You might think Hull should be going up. And I think Hull should go up. Obviously, Peter would do have a game in hand with Hull as well. Then in the top six, then I think we'll see Hull third, Portsmouth fourth, Blackpool fifth, and then Lincoln sixth. I think Lincoln may go on a little bit of a drop. Despite Doncaster having a nice running, despite Oxford looking all right at running, despite Ipswich having a somewhat nice running, I think Ipswich will actually be the team that just missed out in seventh place, actually, with Doncaster just behind them. So, in terms of Hull, Portsmouth, Blackpool and Lincoln, who do I think will get promoted by the playoffs? I think we're going to see a final between Hull and Portsmouth. And I'm going to say Portsmouth to beat Hull. That might be very controversial. So my three teams are going up are Sunderland, Peterborough and Portsmouth. Maybe controversial, maybe Hull should be going up, but we're going to have to wait and see. And hopefully teams like Hull will prove me wrong. Anyway, guys, this is my coverage of League One. If you guys liked this video, please make sure you do give this video a like. tremendously appreciate it. If you haven't done, please subscribe to the channel, especially if you're new around here. All that would really made my day. We want to try to push to 500 subscribers as soon as we can. Please share my channel as well to as many people as you can. All that would really make my day. But thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary for Sony Opus video. And as always, take care, everyone.